Bitcoin breakouts, Ethereum excitement, and alts are, I don't have a good word to alliterate that. Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Aaron Dishner from The Better Traders, where I can teach anyone how to become a better trader. And you're watching TBO Tuesday, my weekly show here on YouTube, where I talk about a handful of coins, handful of charts, and look at them with the lens of the TBO, the trending breakout indicator. So let's get started with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is breaking out. And what's to be expected here on the breakout is exactly what's happening right now. So we had a successful three in a row, which is amazing. Three in a row (laughs) TBO breakout on the daily time frame. You have no idea how crazy and wild this is. I know that the price isn't going up and to the right to 69k. We're already above 50k. I know that yesterday's candle closed red. Right now, today's candle is red. I'm not worried about it. The reason why I'm not worried about it is because, look, all three of these are in a row, these white dots, plus all four lines at the TBO, the slow, medium, slow, medium, fast, and fast are all pointing up. Even though the price is stalling, the chart is screaming bullish. I want to zoom out to show you the last time that we saw one of these TBO breakouts. And this isn't even a perfect cluster. A perfect cluster would be three in a row. So this one happens first on October uh, 20, sorry, October 24th. We got two more later, but what happens after that is the price chops for a couple of days and then it proceeds to shoot up about 27% before having another pullback. That's not the only time it's happened. Now a single breakout isn't enough and having it super spread out usually isn't that great to be honest. So this one popped up and then it fell back down. We're not in that kind of market right now. Here is almost a cluster, but you can see that there are gaps. We have one breakout, three days, no breakout, one breakout, three days, no breakout, and then the price dipped down and then it just did all that fun stuff. But we're not in a recovery market. We are in a very bull focused market. Look at the cloud. The cloud has been green. The TBL slow line has been pointing up ever since the 31st of October. So I want to show you in previous bullish recovery zones, when we have a breakout, we need to pay attention. No, we're not here. We're over here in in terms of price action and excitement, okay? This breakout was a perfect breakout, three in a row. It was going sideways for a long time. And the price moved up about 13% and then fell down into the cloud. It's true. Guess what? We saw another one. Not a perfect breakout, but this was right at the end of October 2020. And this breakout was dead on. 216% increase. We've already seen Bitcoin increase a lot. So it's hard for me to see a 200% increase. We're also not coming out of a bearish transition. We're seeing the the breakout like that. So the last part where where we can actually see this breakout effectively would be back here. So this is 2015. We're not here because we're already out of the bearish zone. We're like right here. This seems more likely to happen. This breakout in 2016, the price did come back down. It fell about 3% before shooting up 70. Uh, Sorry, I have alerts going because I have trades open because the market's really bullish right now. It's crazy. Um, We got this breakout cluster right here. Perfect three in a row. One, two, three. Price kind of goes sideways for a while and it falls right here to the TPO fast line. After that, it rockets up 66%. Then we have another one over here. Note the cloud wasn't even that bullish. This is more like where we are right now. The cloud is bullish. We came out of this area. Actually, this looks really similar. Let me zoom in a bit. This looks extremely similar to where we just were. So here's the bullish TBO breakout cluster, three in a row. This time the price shoots up 90% before having a pullback. And this is only to $2,000, $3,000. Then we get another one. Here's another one, two, three, not perfect, but this one had a 48% pump. And then we're finally topped out. 
I don't care that the price of Bitcoin right now is down a little bit. I really don't. I don't care because I know that we had a breakout cluster, which is crazy bullish and very rare. If we get a pullback, we're going to get a pullback down here to about $48,500. If it falls lower, the lowest it would probably go is down here to the TBL slow line at $38,726, which conveniently happens to be um, just about where the low is here on the 23rd of January. I don't foresee that happening. If we see a pullback, the last one we saw was about 21%. So let's just do this here. If we see a pullback of 21%, again, I do not expect that whatsoever to be that dramatic. It would put us down to 41K. I think we're looking at a pullback of maybe 9% to possibly happen just because things are so bullish. Keep in mind, all of these previous breakouts that I just shared with you on Bitcoin's daily time frame, some of them had pullbacks. So, well, this one, it, look at the cloud right here, though. So this, this one right there is not the same as where we are right now. This is not the same as where we are right now. This is coming from bearish to bullish. This was bull, sorry, yeah, bearish to bullish. This is where we are. 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 All of these had moments where the price did drop. This had fat finger wicks. Don't see fat finger wicks on Bitcoin too much anymore of 6%. This one, after moving up, fell about 9%. This one, after moving up, didn't move down at all. This one didn't move down at all. I think think we're looking at this right here. There's a little bit of a secret I want to share with you in regards to the TBO. See these breakouts? The ideal place to, to enter a breakout trade is not right here. Nope. No, that's massive. It's not right here. The best place to enter is on the TBO fast line. That is the best place to enter. Why? Sometimes you're not able to actually catch the breakout re-entry. But the reason for this is because I've been studying the TBO for the last six years. I know this indicator inside and out. I know how it's performed. I've looked at many time frames. I'm using the same method right now on faster time frames. Even though you might miss out on a three in a row breakout cluster, the, the ideal re-entry is going to be the TBO fast line right here and right here and right here and right here. Now, I know it doesn't feel super bullish right now because the price is going a little bit red. So let's zoom out again. The weekly time frame looks fantastic. All four lines of the TBO are pointing up almost 45 degree angle, which is really bullish. The price is above the cloud, really bullish. Last week, we closed a TBO breakout on the weekly time frame, extremely bullish. I don't care that we're down 1.31% so far this week. Note that if we see that pullback, like I was talking about, interestingly enough, if we see a major 20% pullback, we have support right here at the TBO fast line at $41,415 right now. I am not really worried. Not using the TBO. I'll give you another reason why you shouldn't really be worried about a pullback on BTC. Volume has been exceeding the 30-day moving average right here on the TBT base to quote currency converter, which is basically converting the BTC traded volume into the quote currency, which is USD in this case, because we're looking at Bitstamp. If we want to look at the index to look at aggregate volume, guess what? 
our daily volume is pretty much exceeding every single moving average line right here, and it's pushing it up higher. This is exciting. Here's the more exciting part about this. I want you to focus on this right here, okay? When we've had a major all-time high, you can see that this is a lagging moving average. It comes down, we get our bounce, and then we're starting to move up a bit right here. Look at the date, May 2019. We're looking at June, we get this big spike, we're seeing volume pick up. It didn't sustain, that's okay. And then it kind of just flatlined. I want you to see where we are right now. Kind of amazing, right? We're looking at basically a fractal of this. We're seeing a move up right now. As long as volume on the weekly time frame is exceeding this yellow line, pushing it up higher, we got nothing to worry about. We do have to wait a week for that data, but we got nothing to worry about. Okay, the other thing I want to talk to you about today is all the excitement surrounding Ethereum. Ethereum, as you know, has started the process, not Ethereum, but rather market participants and trading prop firms and desks and all that stuff and investment agencies have, I don't know what the right word is, I'm just kind of making stuff up pulling it out of my butt, is an Ethereum spot ETF. That news was really launched back in here, which propelled the price of Ethereum up a lot. It's only been about a week since that news was shared. Bitcoin, the price of Bitcoin shot up about 75%. There we go, 72%. From the Coin Telegraph intern mistake tweet about the Bitcoin ETF being approved, any actual approval, 72%. Ethereum, if Ethereum were to do the same thing, it started back over here, the 72% would put us up at a crazy high number, unrealistic in my opinion but $4,600, basically near our all-time high for Ethereum. I don't think that's going to happen. But if we just take that in half and go to about 30%, that puts us at about $3,400. It's not too unreasonable to expect that. Even just 20% at 32 or 3,300, which is my target for 25%. It's not that far away. In fact, the excitement over the ETF has also pushed Ethereum up almost to $3,000. Just over the last couple of hours, Ethereum printed a high, a new recent high at $2,985. It's having a pullback right now. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Why? Because if you've been paying attention to TBO Tuesday for any amount of time, I've been talking about Ethereum and the importance of accumulating Ethereum back in here, in January, um, over here, in December as well, saying like, well, we got this happening, but this is still good. Like, I'm, I'm in profit on my Ethereum position. I'll just leave it at that. Now, if Bitcoin were to have a pullback, down about 7%, Ethereum might overreact and do 8% or 9%. Conveniently, that's basically where our TBO fast line is. If you've seen my posts on Discord, I have shared several uh, trading strategies on how to use the TBO. One of them is this springboard. I actually have to search for it. Let's see. There we go. Close out of that. So there we go. This is what I'm talking about, where the price shoots up and you look for an entry on the TBO fast line. This is using the daily time frame. Sorry, this is really, really teeny tiny. But we can see the same thing over here on the real deal chart. If we go to trading view, look, we got lots of these happening. No, it's not just springing off and going up higher. It's kind of grappling and trying to hold on for dear life. But 
we haven't seen the price of Ethereum on the daily time frame touch the fast line since the 7th of February. So we're going on two weeks, which is great. If Ethereum has a pullback because Bitcoin does too, the first logical pop is going to be right there. Stop, pop, whatever. Um, it's going to be at $2,654. If, if, if Bitcoin only has a minor pullback, we'll look at support right here because we have an all-time high and the TBO is accurately, automatically plotted resistance. But when the price flips resistance, it flips to support. So we have support at 2,717. Again, I'm not really worried. I am looking at the big picture, knowing that we are still about 100 days or 90 days away from an Ethereum spot ETF decision. Because the Bitcoin spot ETF decision has already been made, the markets are responding very positively uh, in favor of Ethereum. Again, if Ethereum does not just print consecutive green candles and you're shocked, sorry, let me say it another way. If you're shocked that Ethereum is not just going green, 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 green up to the right, you haven't traded Ethereum before. It's normal for Ethereum to have pullbacks, completely normal. It's very rare to see consecutive green candles, very rare for Ethereum. Usually it's a lot of Christmas lights all the time. Now, on the four hour time frame. There are optimal entries that you can use the TBO to make a good chunk of change. I've been sharing this, as I showed you on Discord, in the TBO trading channel. So recently, today, I posted a chart for Ondo, or Ondo. Uh, it's probably you're going to say it Ondo, but I'm going to read it as Ondo. Which, funny enough, means temperature. I don't know if it has to do with temperature taking, but whatever. So we got our... TBO breakout cluster on the four hour time frame, that's extremely bullish, but I'm not looking to enter here. I would much rather enter on a pullback after that. Could it continue raging higher? Yes, it could. But here we can see the chart right here for Arkham, which we're going to look at in a minute. We've been following Arkham for a long time. Same concept. Here we have TBO breakout cluster price pulls back. That's where we can enter. So the principle is this, and it's quite simple. It's a simple principle. When we see a TBO breakout cluster, meaning that three of these TBO symbols happen ideally in a row, but if not, kind of within five or six bars, we want to look for an entry when the price hits the fast line. This can be automated with trading bots on three commas, for all trading, maybe on other platforms, I don't know. But we look for an entry there and we ride the trend. So if we were to take this entry right here at the fast line, note that it actually is a better entry because if we entered right here on the first breakout, it's only 16% compared to 17. I've posted so many of these same setups for our memberships. In the membership server, I posted basically tons of these. So this is not a miraculous one-off chart. I've seen lots of these setups recently. That's how to trade it. That's how to do it, okay? The next two charts are just refreshers. Um, a while ago, and I don't remember, you'll have to look on my channel, um, but I did talk about Render. Most likely I talked about it in January or December. The reason being because I really liked how Render looked on the weekly time frame. If you remember this chart, I shared this and I was very excited because seeing three TBO breakouts in a row on the weekly time frame, if you thought the daily time frame was good, the weekly time frame is even better. The weekly time frame will take longer, but it means that the move will likely last for a longer amount of time. Render can move up much higher especially with this, especially with all the volume that's coming in right now. We are getting close to the all-time high at $8. Not really worried about it. I think Render could continue moving up, and I'm counting on it. Okay, so on the daily time frame, to make things even more exciting, 
we have a TBO breakout cluster. The cloud, all four lines of the cloud are pointing up. Yesterday alone, the price shot up 7.6%. Um, this is also largely thanks to WorldCoin shooting up like a ridiculous amount of percentage, something like that, over the last how many days? Yeah, 200% over the last two weeks. Uh, so because this AI token, WorldCoin, which is owned, I believe, by Sam Altman of OpenAI, because that's done well, other AI tokens are doing well, which Render is one of them. So there we go. But this is this is fantastic. Uh, this chart looks really good. Another oldie but a goodie is Arkham. Arkham is a chart uh, that I shared with our members way back here in December for the December watch list and January watch list. And I said, this is a chart that you should consider accumulating some of. Why? Because it's a newly listed chart that has no prior history before July 23rd. Therefore, sky's the limit. Once the chart breaks above the high, well, then it's just price discovery going to the moon, which is what I got there. Now, here's how an impulsive investor would behave. An impulsive, actually, that's the wrong way to say it. Let me say it differently. An investor will and should just buy and hold and do nothing. Take these, put them under your butt, and don't touch the computer for a while, okay? That's sit on your hands. That's the best buy and hold strategy you can do, especially with a chart like this. But I'm not an investor. I'm a trader. And because I'm a trader, I look for opportunities to take profits. When Arkham shot up to 121.78, I had my alerts. Once it did it, guess what I did? I sold some. Does that mean that I don't think Arkham can go up to $12 and pull a 10x? Absolutely not. But are there any guarantees? Nope. Is it profit unless you sell some? Nope. So I've sold some Arkham. And you know what I can do now? Is if you'll notice, we have a TBO breakout again, three in a row on the daily time frame. Guess what I'm going to do with the profits that I sold up here? And again, I just sold a little bit of my position. I'm going to be buying more. If the price happens to fall down 40%, guess what? I get a 39% discount. I'm going to reinvest my profits, roll it back in, and then trade it up again. Just keep going and going and going. I am a trader, not an investor. This is how I've made a lot of money in this crypto market. This is how it's done. This is how to make money. You can just sit and do nothing. You can, and you can make a lot of money. But you could also make a lot of money if you could take the time before you enter a trade to figure out, is it worth my time? Will I give it enough time to nurture this trade? Do I have a plan? Am I going to make a plan before I enter this trade? Will I stick to the plan? This is all stuff we talk about, or I talk about in my courses on thebettertraders.com. I talk about this stuff because it's important. It's not enough to have an amazing indicator like the TBO or a fantastic trading platform and the right exchanges and the right markets. You need to have a trading plan before you do any of this stuff or else you're going to walk away broke. You will. You will. So Arkham is doing amazingly well. I expect more to come for Arkham. I will continue trading this one and I will not be surprised to see Arkham shoot up to $10, something like that, to pull a 16X or a 20X. I won't because the market, like we're, we're insanely early right now. We saw a big boost. It's very exciting over the last, what, 12 days up 150%. That's great. Right now, it's only up 95%. That's fine. It's a pullback. I don't care. I know what I'm doing next. And now you do too. So just a quick point. Here is a TBO kind of cluster. See, it's not three in a row, but did it still work? Oh, yeah. Yabba-dabba-doo, it worked. Are you kidding? 119%. 
Now, because we had this breakout back here 50 bars ago, 10 days ago, 60 bars ago, this touch right here on the fast line is not associated with this. That thing I was talking about before with Bitcoin, Ethereum render, we we're talking about the springboard. That's going to have to be a recent breakout. And then we buy on the bounce and then we ride it up. Now, if you see a chart like this and the chart is admittedly bullish, although I don't like how the fast line is starting to curl and flatten and maybe go down. But this is also an ideal entry because the chart, rather, because the TBO is bullish. We could easily get like a nice 8%, 9% bounce off of a little touch like that. It's possible. On the 30 minute time frame, you're going to see lots of these opportunities. See it? There's our breakout. There's our touch. Then we go breakout, no touch. It just goes. But we get all these when we have. When we have the TBO bullishly pointing up like this and we see the price just knocking into it, those are re-entry opportunities to trade it over and over. It will take some time, a couple hours to make those gains. But you know what? If you're able to stick to one chart, make some good money, you know, make some, what, 6%, 39%, 7%, Seven percent, nine percent, eighteen percent, and then oh no, now I'm down fourteen. You just use DCA from here on out. That's it. I mean, you've already made so much money. If the price falls down a little bit, oh well, DCA. Go into it with a plan. Go into all these entries with a plan for DCA. So, all right, I'm giving too much away. Giving too much away. All right. Next up, these are four tokens that you have requested. If you have charts that you want me to review, I would love to look at them. Totally fine doing it. And uh, these charts are user submitted. If you want me to check out something, leave a comment down below. Let me know on X, Instagram, YouTube, or on my public Discord server, or even in the membership Discord server, that's fine. So the first chart we're looking at today is a newly listed token that I actually have a vested interest in because I have a position in IRL. In, in real life, I guess it's what it's supposed to be, but rebase, it's a gaming token. The token recently had a very nice pump. Uh, if I go back to the four hour time frame, it had a couple. So I've been DCAing into a position and I put my last order right about here. Now I'm waiting. My average is about here. So I started DCing really too early, but it's okay because I know how to exit these tokens. I've done this so many times before. It's not even funny. So here's the good news for IRL. One, if I go over here, actually to the daily time frame, because this is better, I want to show you the volume. The first thing that's really good about this is that when we got this first pump right here, not even for that much. It's only $83,000, that pump. And the price in one day shot up 35%. Not bad. Then we got another one. When we got the first one, that told me, bottom. Whenever you see a huge burst of bullish volume, it doesn't matter how far it's fallen. When you see a big burst of volume like that, like this, this is where I, I DCA'd some. Oh, oh, okay. Thank you very much. I told you. Um, I have a lot of alerts that are probably going to trigger during this video, and that's fine. Um, so we got this pump right here. Price comes back where? We're on the four-hour time frame. Where does the price come back to? TBO support. 19% push. Look at that. Again, a 19% push, then it goes up 45%. Now, on the second pump, this is really important that you pay attention here. On the second pump, you usually will not see the price retrace down lower. Because now we've established that there's some excitement going on with this. And we see the volume really coming in. See that? The price does not go down to our support at six cents. It actually shot up all the way here to 11 cents, about 75%. 
Note, what do we have right here? Gasp. We have a TBO breakout. Not a perfect cluster, but pretty close. Not three in a row. But how does the cloud look? Are all four lines angling up? They are. How about volume? Is the four-hour volume exceeding the moving average here, the 30-period moving average or the 30 SMA? It is. So because we've recently seen a breakout, guess where would be a really good entry or re-entry for IRL? Probably around here, a bounce off of the TBO fast line. If anything, you could just trade a second bounce, just like that. Now, I'm looking for bigger profits on a chart that's been severely oversold. So we can go ahead, actually, good, okay. So we can just draw our FIB retracement levels like this, and we can plot out our targets. We can look to sell some up here at 14 cents, just under 20 cents, all the way up here to 26 cents. It could actually move up even higher. We've seen coins, I believe, like say, actually like this, that Really similar, actually, if you see that. Super high listing price, pumped up a ton. And the price fell down 60% over two months. And then what happened? What changed? Do you see it? So finally, we saw volume is picking up a little bit, price is picking up, and there's our first pop in our volume. Looking at previous volume, that's the first burst right there. What happens next? Volume starts pouring in and pouring in and pouring in. Now, I'm not saying the same exact thing is going to happen with, say, but it's interesting that, um, sorry, with IRL, but say has from its bottom up to the top grown 822%. It's almost, actually, no, it did. Just recently, it hit this all-time high up here. Now, that's the dream scenario to hit the all-time high because that's a 6x. Completely possible. It really is. It is completely possible. But it's, it's going to take a lot more volume for that to happen for this chart. All right. Next one that you asked me to check out is VXV, Vector Space Biosciences. I believe this is a DSI token. I admit that I am not very learned in DSI tokens, but... That's okay. I know that it is a narrative and there are many other tokens like Lake and Gene uh, and Vita. Those are three other ones that you could check out. But we're just going to be looking at the chart again with the TBO. So first off, the price is above the cloud. It was way bullish over here and it went inside the cloud. Note that we had an early warning alert that things were getting bearish for VXV. Where? Right here. As soon as the price went inside the cloud, for one, right there, that's a bearish sign where it's like, okay, cut the rope. <laughs> we have our TBO close longs. We have a cross down. We have an open short. That's the TBO bear formula. If this was you, you had 20 days to act. Cut it with a loss or go, okay, if this is happening, where do I want to place a manual safety trade order? Where would I want a DCA? Well, I'd want a DCA looking at the chart here at 31 cents because of this support and this support. I'd want a DCA here. Ah, again, 26 cents. I'm missing it. It's okay. So what happens with the price? Does it go down that low? No, it doesn't. Where does it go as low as? Ah, right here. That's okay. So once the price does something like this and it starts to go below the cloud, and we're getting close to these entries, I'm watching a position like this. Trust me, if I'm in it, I'm watching it. I'm going to be looking to see, well, we also have this historical support and this historical support. So I want to look for areas at which to buy some more. Because if I ended up here and I just want to hold, buying more at 41% means that I'm going to significantly average down my entry. If my entry is up here and I use Martingale DCA strategy, doubling down, I'll be able to average my buy or entry position at least down here to 43 cents, 42 cents, which means if that were the case, I would be up 
28% instead of well, down 11 or 12%. Honestly, DCA is magic. It really is. Right now, the chart doesn't look extremely bullish. It's, it is seeing more volume, which is good, but the volume isn't growing. Not like it did before when it was first listed. The best thing this chart has going for it, honestly, is that it fell down so much that it could be a really nice pop. I don't know about going all the way back up, but again, when did it list? November 2021, at the top, Pico top of the bull market, which means that it hasn't seen a bull market. I know it seems weird. It's the top. It's the end of the bull market. Therefore, this chart has not actually seen the start of a bull market, and now it has. Charts like these, I wouldn't get greedy to look to take profit at the one at a full retrace. Take profits on the way up. Just take profits on the way up. All right. Goldfinch, GFI, another super oversold chart. This one's on Coinbase. This one fell as low as 93%. When did it list? January 2022. No prior history. No experience of a real bull market. Look at the, this is the weekly time frame. Look at the volume that came in the week of the 20th. The price is above the cloud on the weekly. It looks good if we go to the daily time frame. Yeah, there was a big push of volume right there. That's massive. That's a ton of buying. And the prices just kind of went inside the cloud. And now it's starting to move above. Honestly, with a chart like this, I would be more interested in running a DCA bot because then it's relatively set it and forget it. I don't like saying that because no bot is set it and forget it completely. You still need to check up on it, but you could trade the volatility of going up and down and accumulate tokens so that if the price of Goldfinch goes up, even to the 786 and pulls a 10x, you don't have to enter a position and stomach all the volatility. You can just accumulate as it falls, which is ideal, super ideal. Not not a bad chart, but not a great chart. Um, if anything, Goldfinch would be way better for faster time frames like the 30 minute and just trading these moves. I mean, this kind of stuff is what I used to trade. This looks terrible these little moves right here, but these are actually great entries where you can build an account over and over. It's not a big fat finger, but it's enough and it's safe. These nice little pops, just trading it over and over or just going to the four hour and just doing support to resistance bounces. It takes time. It takes patience and skill, but that 17%, 17%, 13% DCA. 17% again, or if you got right there, just 29%, 28%. I would rather look at that and trade and trade and trade and trade instead of just entering position and then accumulating tokens, meaning I would place trades and keep a percentage of the position open and set the target super duper high, like 500%. So that way you're not completely selling all of your GFI tokens. You're keeping some uh, on hand just in case the price moves up and explodes, which could happen. The last one I want to share with you that was user requested is Flux. So it's been a while since I've looked at Flux. So this chart is looking really strong. This is actually a really good chart for AB trading. Sorry, AB trading. DCA bot trading. If we go to the four hour time frame, you'll see why. Lots of great whips and bounces. That's a 34% bounce. That's a 19% bounce. It's an 18% bounce. And lo and behold, what do we have here? We have, this is not a really pretty cluster at all. But what happens? The price hits the fast line right there. See it? Almost hits it. There we go. 57%. Even if it doesn't, right there, it hits it. Guess what? Got a nice 40%. The charts you guys are suggesting are fantastic. I would love to see what other charts you got. Flux is definitely an AB trading chart where it has these big pumps. AB trading on an uptrend, to be completely honest with you, is so much easier than AB trading on a downtrend. You guys have it good. 
If you're starting right now, you have it really good. If you've been trading with me since 2022 or even 2019 when we started or 2020, you've seen it all. You've seen the bull market. You've seen the bear market. You've seen everything. If if you've learned anything up until now, if you can remember anything up until now, I want you to remember this. There will always be another You're going to set alerts and you're going to find some amazing entries. You're going to set alerts and place some trades and you won't get filled and you miss out on a big run. Don't cry over it. Move on because there will always be another. There are literally opportunities popping every single day, all the time. Don't let that stress you out. Let it excite you. Let it give you some peace about trading, knowing that If there's always going to be another setup and always going to be another opportunity, then it means if I miss this one, "Ah, okay, next one. It's a way healthier, much healthier mindset to approach trading with instead of, oh, I missed that one. Oh, I missed that one. Oh, (laughs) that's not a good place to be. I hope you're making lots of profits. Now, the next step, if you watch them to this point and you haven't hit the like button, kind of hurt my feelings. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what's going on? So hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. If you want more, we have courses on thebettertraders.com. We also have a membership subscription. The membership subscription, um, two of the tiers include the TBO. It includes access to our private Discord server, my monthly watch lists, DCA back tester templates for DCA bots, lovers, AB trading, picks and watch the swing trading picks. One of my swing trading picks, uh, OM, O-M, shot up 1,300% or 1,600%. So for me, it was my first 10X of the season, which is great. Um, there's a ton of stuff. I'm not even going to go through it all. The membership is also a great choice. If you're looking for good charts, good market analysis, good community, there's, there's way more coming. I can't say too much, but there's more coming. Okay. So until the next time, you know what to do. Stay awesome and stay in the green. Peace.